start. So set the stage. It's November of 1864. As late as September of 1864, Lincoln thought there was a good chance that he would lose the 1864 election, mm. at, lose it to George, George McClellan, who had promised to va- negotiate with the Confederacy, let the Confederacy go in peace. Uh, then Atlanta falls, and the, the, he has this miraculous eight weeks where he goes from being a likely loser of the election to uh, winning quite decisively in November. Um, in those days, it was the custom that when a president won, his supporters, and the president would have a lot of supporters because one of the pro- ways you ran the presidency was you created a lot of patronage jobs. So everyone who worked in Washington was a Republican political hire. And if Lincoln had lost, they would all be out of work. So they were very happy. And they form a big group and they get some musical instruments and they go to the White House to serenade the president on his reelection. In those days, of course, there's no Truman balcony. So the only way the president can greet is to come out onto the onto the steps of the White House facing Pennsylvania Avenue. And there, of course, there's no security. There are no barriers. The crowd's right there. And Lincoln with this triumph, you might think he would take a victory lap. Um, at, but Lincoln being Lincoln, he, instead, he wrote out his remarks in advance. And he wrote this profound philosophical meditation. And I want to read you three sentences that are um, re- that we, we should all take to heart, it seems to me. Um, the strife of, this, of the election is but human nature practically applied to the facts of the case. What has occurred in this case must ever occur in similar cases. Human nature will not change. In any future great national trial, compared with the men of this, we shall have as weak and as strong, as silly and as wise, as bad and as good. Let us therefore study the incidents of this as philosophy to learn wisdom from, and none of them as wrongs to be avenged. Yeah, somewhat different. How somebody could say that at such a time after so much suffering, I don't know, but he did, and um, it's uh, it's it speaks to me because we have had much human wrong, much human folly, um, a lot of things that one might wish to avenge, but we have a lot of philosophy to study to gain wisdom from, because if we can get past today's trials, I think we can bequeath some lessons that will make for a better America in the future. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if you've ever watched The Godfather. Many times, yeah. Okay, the very first opening scene where the, the Undertaker comes to see the dawn and the opening words of the film are the Undertaker's, I believe in America. Yeah. Now in the movie, it's there's a context because he's they're, they're going to now test the man's faith and expose it as somewhat, you know, lacking. But I think we can take it verbatim. I, I believe in America. And I think, I think that's a belief we all need to, whatever other changes in beliefs come, that's a belief we need to uphold. <laughs> 